but so he, now, we, obviously. we offered it to him and some, for some reason he, we, we didn't get a positive response. I don't know if it ever went to him. I don't know what happened, but basically it was a pass. And then later on, we were still having trouble, um, casting the role and Michelle Borth, who plays, um, staff, who I understand you maybe have like big smoking hot crush. For. I said I'd bite her. Is that weird? <laughs> I could ask her if she's into biting. I don't know. I don't know how that. I don't know how. That would I work. mean, like she's she's no, she's just like really cool. Yeah, she's smart. <laughs> she's just like she seems really she's smart, smart deep, and cool, generous. <laughs> yeah, it's you know, it's like funny, like yeah, like good personality. Yeah, yeah. Um, so she called. She knows Desmond, <laughs> and she called him, and that's how oh. we got Desmond. Yeah, to finish that story, but we can go back to Michelle if you want. <laughs> if we could. She's um she's sexy. What's she like? She does she smell good? She looks like she smells good. <laughs> she does smell good. She's also um she has no problem getting naked all the time. Really? <laughs> yeah, that's actually true. Um she's no modesty. Um that's good. I thought, I that's good. That like helps. That. I thought you would like that. Um and she's but she's she is actually very smart and very funny oh. and very committed to her work and she really wanted to do a comedic role and so that's why she accepted this role and she was game for anything and she was really cool. Should I talk about her being naked again mm-hmm. more? Was that was that Good. boring what I just said? No, I just like is there like B roll or like deleted scenes? There's a lot. Scenes? There's a lot of B. They're actually actually on the DVD, which isn't which should be out very soon. Um, the majority of the deleted scenes is her material. Um, because it's all great and she did a great job, but in order to sort of keep with Una's storyline and, and keep it, keep the pacing going, we ended up having to pull out a lot of, a lot of her stuff. Well, and actually that was one of the things, I'm sorry to jump in. Um, you know, uh, from, from, from like the artistic standpoint, looking at the, the sort of overall story arc, um, there definitely seemed to be sort of a conscious decision to... I mean, we're keeping the story on Una. Yeah. Una is definitely the the, the, center. the, the center of yeah. the story. Mm-hmm. But especially as we're getting into the end, there seemed to be a conscious decision to sort of leave a lot of the other characters, the supporting character stories, kind of wide open. Yeah, yeah. And, and like, I think more so than any of the others, the sister. Yes, very much. And actually, that mm-hmm. all of that material is, is in the deleted scenes because mm-hmm. their, her storyline was wrapped up. Um, and it was that we went through um, when we were doing um, when we were cutting the film. We had we had about 12 or so screenings, feedback mm-hmm. screenings. Um, uh, which is like the greatest way ever to work on a movie. Really, um, a positive sort yeah, of experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's. Okay. It, I mean, it really, really is. I mean, it's it's excruciating. It's really, really painful and really, really difficult. But it's you. You have to be ballsy and you have to do that. Like you can't mm-hmm. be precious about your work. And gotcha. you know, the, it's a it's a romantic comedy. It has no business being longer than an hour forty minutes, which is what it is. Do you know what I mean? And so, <laughs> yeah. like, I'm not going to be like, it's perfect. It's two hours done. So we had these, and and our and our screenings got bigger and bigger. Like we started with, you know. 15 people and then toward the end we were doing screenings for like for like we actually our last big feedback screening we did a version of the movie for 50 50 people that was very una centric and had yeah. cut everything out and then we did a screening for people that still had all the tie-ups for all the oh, other okay. characters and it was about 10 or 12 minutes longer yeah um for an, for a different set of 50 people and then we examined the results and the other the other one with all the other storylines um Everybody complained about length and gotcha. pacing. Oh. And then in the first one, every once in a while, people would be like, oh, I wish I knew what happened to the sister. And oh, mm-hmm. but we, you know, it was a sacrifice that yeah. ultimately, I mean, ultimately it's my decision, but but we as a creative team decided it was, we had to go with what was right for the core story. Um, and yeah, and, and leave things open-ended. But the beautiful thing about DVD is that like the, all of the, that story work gets a second life. And gotcha. anyone who's interested in these other storylines gets to... And see what, and what, so, what the intention was. And so on the DVD, are, is is it like special features fire? Yeah, so yeah. it's not like you did a special director's no, cut? No, 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 no. Okay. Because I don't, I, I don't really believe in director's cuts for me. Um, I mean, the movie exists. That's yeah. how it is. Um, but, and I actually, the least things made me cringe a little bit because they're so like rough. And yeah. when you see them, you're like, well, obviously that's why I didn't get in there. But the reason <laughs> that I included them on this and I sort of broke my own rule is because I, I care, care so much about these characters and I wanted everyone to see what my intention was and when I go to festivals and I do Q&A's people always ask me about the other characters and um and I often tell them what was in the script where mm-hmm. where they landed just because I want people to know where where you had intended yeah to yeah take yeah, that yeah kind of exactly stuff. I have a question <gasps> this the premise mm-hmm. for timer yeah where did this come from um yes um I came up with the idea um well actually I'm gonna tell you the truth <laughs> I have a, um, I have a, 
I have a standard sort of thing that I do, but I'm going to tell you the longer version because we've got some time. We're, we're cool. I actually came up with the concept like in my early 20s, but it was like a really, really sci-fi thing. In, um, in college, I wrote my thesis on dystopian literature. I'm mm-hmm. kind of a sci-fi nerd. And, um, and so I, it was way, it was it, like people had timers and they were like, um, right here. Like there were these things and they, everyone dressed the same and it was very Logan's like, running. Yeah, it was a little Logan's running. It was, a, it was, a, um, there's a film called We, it's a Russian novel. It's one of the first dystopian novels. And it was, it was sort of informed by that. Everybody lived in these like glass houses and wore the same clothing and lived in the structure. And, and it was actually very cool because the community was surrounded by this big wall and outside was, was, you know, nature and but there was a Hairiness. poison. Um, no, the the um, <laughs> you can read we. It's actually a very complicated <laughs> plot. But anyway, I wrote my part of my thesis on it. But so it was very. It was like that. And then I just wrote it in a journal and didn't really think about it. And then years later, um, four years ago to be exact, my brother was getting married. Um, and my mother had one of those countdown to the big day clocks. Oh. Bing dudes, I don't know if you know what this is. Do you know? There's it's a countdown a little, to the yeah, big day. Yeah, it's a little clock, and you program in the date of the wedding. And so it tells you, hey, you have 72 days left to get the caterer and to get the, like, flowers, right? Wow, wow that right? seems really intense. Horrible. Horrible. Like you're just staring not, at this. Not only is it, like, a horrible little thing, but it's in milliseconds. Oh. So it's fucking, like, going down, going down. And so my, so my mom had one of these things, right? And I'd go over to her house, and it was, like, next to her computer and I would just watch you my just life. Stare I just stare at it and I would like be like oh sweet look my ovaries are shriveling up this is great and that's how fast it's happening and my brother has <laughs> met his soulmate and I love her and they're married and they have babies and all that is wonderful but I was um I was actually I was newly dating somebody but I wasn't I w- didn't I had done my soulmate and I was like this mm-hmm. is this is bullshit and Sounds I was familiar. cranky and there was like, you know, engagement party in New York, engagement party, you know, LA and engagement party, motherfucking engagement party. And, <laughs> and I was like, oh man, I have no date to this wedding. And I thought if I could just like, I don't, I don't need my soulmate, you know, and I was dating someone and I was like, I'm, it's cool. I can date this person. Like all of that is fine, but I would like to know that there mm-hmm. is like a happy ending out there. Mm-hmm. And so I thought if I could have a device mm-hmm. that would tell me when he was showing up, like it can be years from now, yeah. then I could like calm down and be a pleasant mm-hmm. bridesmaid and not be such a bitch at the wedding. So, um, so, and then it, it was, there was that early sort of kernel that then I turned into this movie and I, uh, having had those sort of years to evolve, you know, my voice and my style, I really wanted to keep it present day. And I was mm-hmm. very inspired by eternal sunshine, of spotless mind. Yeah. Because like, that's a, that's a nutball's oh, yeah. concept, yeah. right? But it's present day and it has very little explanation, but it's done in such a creative way and you just swallow it and you think it's awesome and you move forward. And it's a huge allegory for life and love. Mm-hmm. And I was like, that's what I want to do. I want to do that kind of style. And plus we had zero budget for any kind of sci-fi crap. <laughs> the glass house um, got declined. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was like, everybody in the special costume designers like, Star Trek Next no. Generation no. outfit. What if like, they're just oh. Terry Cloth robes, guys? <laughs> Come on, work with just buy me. into it. Just buy into it. Terry Cloth is big in the future. Um, so yeah, and I just, I just thought it would be like I, I think that one of the reasons that Eternal Sunshine, one of the many reasons it's such, it's such a success, is it's so, it's so accessible. You know, yeah. like you really identify with them in that relationship. Well, and I think we're we're in an era of smart science fiction. Yeah, like science fiction doesn't need to be five hundred years in the future. Right. We, we can we can just take right. We we can do the the filmmaker trick of you know what would the world be like if I changed one thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. and that can be science fiction. Right. Mm-hmm. And so that yeah. it was one of the most exciting things about I actually in watching this film is that there wasn't any sort of like, like, sorry, Star Old Wars. Old guy with the paper. Yeah, like the, the crazy <laughs> scientist who explains how the science right. works or yeah. the midi chlorine scan yeah, yeah, yeah. from Star Wars or something like that. We had a midi chlorine scan and then I was like, we, it's, it's all in like, the scenes. No. <laughs> No. He's more than Master Yoda. <laughs> what? No. No, I, yeah. I agree. I think that was a really good decision because part of me wants to like start uh, dealing with the fact that the timer is predicting the future mm-hmm. and timelines. And if there was any hint of like like an old guy like, oh, well, you see, time right. has parallel universes, then that would have flipped the switch and mm. it would have made me nuts. Right. Yeah. Well, because I it, actually, we were interviewing people to do our behind the scenes featurette and mm-hmm. this one team came in and they were like, we thought we could do like a whole featurette on your research for this project, all your scientific research. And I was like, right. <laughs> yeah. So it would be <laughs> a three second um, behind the scenes featurette.